Welcome everyone to another episode of Everyone's Got a Story. I am your host, Lyndon Griffith Jr. And today we have a special episode. I have another special guest and I also have help for today's show. I wanna introduce my family and friend and co-host for today's show, the beautiful and intelligent Tiffany Worrell. Hey. Tiffany, say what's up to the people. Hello everybody. All right. Now, before I introduce today's guest, I want to thank everyone who liked, subscribed, and shared episode one. Thank you all for your support and well wishes on the show. I really appreciate it. Now, let's get into what's about to happen. Let me introduce to you a trailblazer, someone who has defied the odds and is successful in trading. It is our pleasure to have Keisha Green to the show to give us those gems about investing and what you need to do to be successful. Keisha, welcome to the right. show. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. Thank We're you happy for having to be me. Here. I'm happy to have you here, Keisha. All right, All right so let's get right into it, Keisha. What inspired you to become an investor? Money. Simple. <laughs> I like that. Money. Money. All right, that's, that's right. Money. All right, so how long have you been an investor? I would like to say I've recently, I just became an investor because at first I didn't understand investing. So about three years. Now, I like the way you broke that down. It sounds like you were so, so say, so, so say that again one time because I think you separated something. Yes. And there's a reason why you probably separated. Yes. Before I was just like buying like stocks or buying whatever um, versus investing, thinking long term. I was buying and gambling, hoping to flip my money versus thinking, okay, I'm going to need money every day going forward. So if I can find something and buy in at the low, something that I believe is going to appreciate over time, I could play the long-term game and I will always have money. How long have you been an investor? It, I'm, I've been trading for about five and a half years, but I've been investing for like the past two and a half, three years. It's a difference. Now, speak on that difference for the people who may not understand there is a difference. Um, now, when I was trading, it was more like gambling. Like I was looking for a return right now. Uh, I was looking for the fast money. Um, when I turned or when I decided that or when I understood investing, it became the long term gain. So I was looking for things that um, that can make me money, that can make me profits over time versus just me thinking about today because I plan on making money tomorrow. I want to make money the next day, the next year, the next year. So um, I started um, realizing that I was gambling because I was looking to make money every day versus me um, getting an asset that appreciates over, over time. time. Got you. Got you. Go ahead, Tiff. So Ms. Green. Yes. <laughs> when I hear Wall Street or so All Streets, Automatically, I'm thinking that's a bar, mm -hmm. and I and I'm like Wall Streets or All Streets? What streets? Tell me about it. What is Wall Streets or All Streets? Now, Wall Streets or All Streets, right? Now, I'm I'm gonna talk about this before. When I was in high school, I actually had an internship on Wall Street, which was crazy. They was paying me seven hundred and nineteen dollars, seven nineteen eighty three, a week. Most people don't high even, school. This is high school. People. This high is school. going. This is this going is back. So yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. this is high school. My first internship in high school when I was in the eleventh grade at Robeson. I got an internship on Wall Street, and they paid me seven nineteen oh three. Now, Wall Street is a place that we know that is very wealthy, is very knowledgeable. My goal is to bring the knowledge of Wall Street to my street, to your street, to our street. Growing up, no one, or no one on my street were investing. No one on my street was talking about stocks or investing, or even Wall Street itself mm -hmm. or the place. Mm -hmm. They were talking about nothing else. So the the name Wall Street to Wall Street is literally. Um, bringing the knowledge and the wealth of Wall Street to my street, your street, all streets. And what inspired this vision? Money. Money. Yeah, no, no, seriously, money. Yeah. What happened was um, I made my money so fast mm -hmm. off someone else's knowledge that it clicked. If I can learn this, I can change the game for my family. I can change the game for my street. I can change the game for my, my community. Mm -hmm. I can change the game for my friends. Mm -hmm. I can change the game because I clicked a button off mm -hmm. of someone else's knowledge. Mm. So automatically I wanted to know, how did she know? Mm. How did you know? Yeah, that. Mm -hmm. yeah no, listen, that the passion, because we all like investing. We, we talk off, off air about investing. And when you do, I had that moment too. This, this is about you, but when you see whatever amount of money you make, and you say like, I just, I did, I, I was able to do this because I had the knowledge mm -hmm. and I didn't have to work blood, sweat mm -hmm. and tears to get mm -hmm. it. It is a very powerful thing and, you, and it makes you want to say, I got to learn it more mm -hmm. so I can make more. So, you know, 
We're not afraid to say we want to make money on this show. Absolutely. And you know what it also makes you? When they get up in the morning. <sighs> yeah. It makes you hate weekends. Because you know what's funny? And we're going to have real conversation and, and, and real talk in this episode. I preach for a little while investing to people too. I'm not the best, but I know the importance of mm -hmm. that skill that you talked about that moment. I want other people to experience that. Absolutely. Because when you're working 40 hours, overtime, this, mm -hmm. that, it takes away from your life that you should be having. Time is the most valuable thing. Absolutely. And if you mm -hmm. can invest and have more time to live your regular life, and make somebody, your family's life better. It is an amazing thing. And so many times people say the excuses why they don't want to learn it. And it's like, yo, we really programmed to like- Work. To work and to find excuses to not like, forget about how much you're going to put into it, just to learn it. To learn. Right. And then have that moment you had, right? <laughs> so I just wanted to just put that out there because we here with you, and you're somebody who we can look and say, you did this, I can do it. Mm -hmm. Right? So, all right, so we're going to keep it going, Keisha. You know, you know why they pay us a salary? Well, they, when I left my job, I had just got a, about a $10,000 raise. I was making about $118,000. Which is a good salary. Which is a great salary. I was making over $5,000 a month, which is nobody in my neighborhood was doing that, mm -hmm. as far as, like I said. So, But do you know why they pay us a salary? To keep you coming back to work? No, to forget about your dreams. Mm. Oh, they forget. pay you to forget your goals and dreams. They pay yeah. you to forget... Because I'm paying you. This check is coming every two weeks. It's coming like this. It's almost automatic in a sense mm -hmm. that why go work hard? Because when you have goals and dreams, you have to go work. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, there's a difference between a job. Am I, I don't, there's a difference between a job and work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Work you have to put time, energy, effort, like everything into. A job, you just show up and kind of fall in line you could some people fly high or fly low, fly low fly in between but when you're working you can't you can't fake that yeah, yeah. like you can't fake work you know you no. can right. so they pay they pay they, my job i realized my job was paying me a salary because they wanted me to forget about my dreams and my dreams is bigger than their salary it took me till 40 to understand that it and sometimes it takes people longer mm -hmm. but what you're speaking is what i'm facing now yeah. it's what it's and it, you know and it's, it's like wait a minute I wake up every day, and, you know, I speak to you now more often than ever. Mm -hmm. Than ever. Mm -hmm. I speak to more than ever. Mm -hmm. And our basis of our conversation is investing. Mm -hmm. How can we get out of this nine to five life right race, where now where we have to <clears throat> race home to spend the three hours with our kids? Mm -hmm. yeah. This is not the life where I'm for me, I'm in my, my last days. I always say that, but I do feel like that. You, feel you, like have, that, time. <laughs> you have time. I need I need to be able to enjoy. I wanna learn, you mm -hmm. know, and I feel like when you say Wall Streets to all streets, this is what what I learned from you, I wanna be able to teach my kid. Absolutely. And teach my family. Mm -hmm. And how do we get Have some of my old point? aunties like, what's going on? I want to yeah. invest too, mm -hmm. you know, and we need that. We need that. We need that. And sure. people are, we're not informed and scared. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what it is. It's being scared and not informed. So that's what we're here for. And then that's, what he, that's, that's yeah. absolutely right. So Keisha, so to get to this point that you're at, who were the mentors along the way that gave you that game? Okay. When I was 13, my mother um, put my sister in a program. And it was it wasn't my sister didn't like it because she was be like she was kind of being bad. But I saw the value in it. My sister had a mentor. Mm -hmm. Now, her mentor was taking her places. This is what did it for me. My sister's mentor bought her a desk. Sounds crazy, right? A desk. Mm -hmm. I was a student and in our bedroom. Me and my sister shared a bedroom growing up. Mm -hmm. Her mentor bought her the desk and the desk was just there. My sister never used it. I used it. I wanted a mentor. Her mentor was an engineer and, you know, I was, I was, I was interested. So I asked my mother to put me in a program. That was one of the best things that could have ever, ever happened to me. So my first mentor, her name is Lauren Joyner. I love you. I appreciate you. And what she did for me, it's priceless. It was things like this. I lived in bed Brooklyn. She would take me to places like Park Slope, which was not far from bed Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Like, and we would go to the movies. I've never experienced the movie theater calm. In bed or mm -hmm. where we used to go to the movies, it was rowdy. Mm -hmm. It was ratchet. It was, she lived in Brooklyn. She lived in Clinton Hills. I lived in bed -Stuy. She would take me to her neighborhood. It was just very peaceful. So she removed me from where I was mm -hmm. and started planting me in different places. Mm -hmm. They thought we were buried, but we were seeds. Another thing she did, she looked at me with eyes of who I could be and not what I thought I was. 
mm -hmm. um, growing up. As you guys can see, I'm dark skin. It was a thing. Black and ugly, you blacky, black, black. And I'm telling you, to this day, that's one thing that could really, I'm not insecure anymore, but that one thing could really still tear me down. Mm -hmm. So I remember one day I spoke of it and she took me and I cried because she tried to speak it out of me. She spoke life into me, like what I could be. And that was it. That changed the game. When I was 13, wow. that changed the game for me already. That right there. And then later on, of course, I had other mentors. You know, I joined network marketing. It was very, um, it was a self-development type of uh, business. And um, in 2014, I made a decision, right? I read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and it changed me. It told me about choices. They said, broke people choose, rich people have both. Mm. I said, hold on. And this was the story that happened. She's speaking. This was the story. Mm -hmm. Remember how we used to go sneaker shopping? Mm -hmm. School shopping. How many pairs of sneakers can you get? Right. One. Right. Mm -hmm. If you like two, your parents would make you choose one. Mm -hmm. And it's like Rich Dad, Poor Dad in the book, it said, you can have both. I, I can like, have what? both? I can have both. I said, what? Mm -hmm. And that from that book, to, when the book told me I could have both, I just... I don't know, I, I was in pursuit of being able to not have to choose. And in and, and that book today, they also show you the, the lifestyle of one dad and another dad, Versus right? another dad, absolutely. <clears throat> and how I think one dad was like an owner, of, he was a, more of a businessman than the other guy was. So mm -hmm. I always hear, I think Jeezy has an a interview with Angie Martin. He, he mentioned that book too. That book is phenomenal. That book always comes out of the lips of so many people. That book changed yeah, my I life. Mean, and it, it didn't show the child, he didn't dislike the... One father, he just saw a different lifestyle. Yeah, and what it didn't that show that the father who may have worked in on a father didn't have, he didn't love him. Mm -hmm. The other father just showed him another way. Yep, he showed him the different things that you was know. happening. You know, like growing up in our household, money. We can't yes. talk money at the table. Right. That's a that, when you're broke, you don't talk right. about money. So when you guys are asking me, well, money off limits? Yeah, money's not off limits because I, it's not. Right. When, it's like money is usually off limits when people are uncomfortable. Mm. You know what I mean? If money is still making, if money conversations are making you nervous, you need to get around some people who have money afraid, or are not okay. afraid to, you so know what I mean? Right. Not even talk money, but spend money and show you, or even rip some money. I wouldn't, I wouldn't encourage <laughs> rip it up, but show you that, listen, this thing right here, yeah. money, what happened for me was, right? I was 38 years old, 37 years old, and I was broke basically, you know, living paycheck, paycheck to paycheck. And then I made $800,000, mm -hmm. right? Say and again for the and then I made eight hundred thousand okay. dollars, right? Eight hundred thousand dollars, two hundred thousand dollars from a million dollars. And what happened was, I sat down. My friend Erica said to me, "Is that real money?" Mm -hmm. Because it was in my trading account. Mm -hmm. So I was like, "Yeah, it gotta be real." So then she said, "Withdraw some." So I withdrew five thousand every day. I withdrew five thousand until eight hundred thousand was in my account. Mm -hmm. That made it real. Now what hit me was. Now I have money. But what's your next goal? Like, what's next? Right. My whole life, I've been chasing money or been working towards getting money. Right. That the, then the money came, and it's like, now what? But they said, right, when you unlock the vault, meaning when you self-develop enough or when you do what you're supposed to do, when you prepare, the money will start coming in so fast, you will start wondering, where has this money been hiding my whole life? Yes. Because money's not hard to get. It's really hard to keep. Yeah. But that's another story. That's another story. <laughs> so speaking of the $800,000, I know you made it, most of the money through Forex. What is Forex and how do you in, like, invest in Forex? Forex is a style of trading. It's like a, it's a market. Forex mm -hmm. is a market. It's called the foreign exchange market. Mm -hmm. And um, the simplest way or the most common way that people know of like doing Forex is like, let's say we go to Jamaica mm -hmm. and you exchange your U.S. dollars for Jamaican dollars. Okay. You just did Forex. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Now, well, that's, a simple, yeah. that's, a that's thing. very simple for so people to understand. Okay. Right? Okay. Because when you change your money out, like you would change your 10 American dollars, how okay. many Jamaican dollars would you get? 100,000 maybe, right? You just appreciate it. Now they brought Forex to our phones. We could do it on our phones. It's just trading the value of two different currencies. One is either going to be up, one is going to be down. You trade the direction of the currencies. It sounds a little complicated, but it's really not. The simplest way to think of it is thinking of the battle of two countries. We got the US, which versus represents the US dollar. Mm -hmm. Then we got Japan, which represents the Japan yen. Yeah, it's going mm -hmm. up and down. Which one is, yeah, and they're both, the monies go up and down at one time. So when you're trading Forex, you're trading two currencies against each other. So if the US dollar, if I'm doing USD, JPY, mm -hmm. it's the US versus the Japan yen, mm -hmm. and the US dollar is stronger right now, I'm looking to take 
trace to the upside because the USD is in front. Okay. If I'm looking, if the JPY is stronger, I'm taking trades to the downside because JPY is in the back. So basically, you're just trading the direction of the stronger currency at that moment. I want to ask a tip. So on Forex, what are the different things you can trade on Forex? Um, on a Forex platform, you yeah. can trade everything. You can trade crypto. You can trade commodities. You can trade currencies. You can trade uh, futures. Wow. You can trade everything wow, okay. on a Forex market. You can trade, yeah, literally everything. Wow, no, no, no. So for, for the Forex people out there, it, it, it sounds enticing. I really have the, to get, get, get into it. The Forex market is the biggest market in the world. The Forex market incorporates every other market that we trade. Okay. So if at least try, because I think that's what even people like myself, you know, the everyday mom or the average person working nine to five, you think like, oh, I don't have this extra hundred dollars to even try, but you'll go spend a hundred dollars on something else. on Foam. coffee mm -hmm. in four or five days or Absolutely. get lattes for fifteen dollars. Mm -hmm. And you could easily say, you know what, let me just put twenty dollars in forex and see if I can make twenty five. Because mm -hmm. once you see you could make five dollars, you can make a million dollars. That's Absolutely. what I tell people. Absolutely. If you can make a dollar, you can make a million. Absolutely. And it and, and to be honest with you, even myself listening to you. The simplicity of how you put it, just trading the currencies, it's like, oh, okay, so that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Because when you look at it on YouTube or Instagram, you it looks so it's, it's it difficult. It sounds. And yes. You're like, what is this? It's moving so fast, and yeah. you don't know if you're losing your hundred dollars in minutes <laughs> or if you made five hundred dollars in seconds. And you're like, wait a minute, mm -hmm. this is yeah. you know. It's so how do you actually invest? Like, do you have to download a program? Do you? How do you put the money in? Like, tell the people. How if I want if I had a hundred dollars right now, mm -hmm. where do I go? What do I do? But prior to after I learned and I did everything, how do I actually invest? Okay. So now what happened is right, traditional trading, like if I'm doing stocks, I would trade, let's use Robinhood. Mm -hmm. I would trade and buy my stocks on Robinhood, which mm -hmm. is considered a broker. Mm -hmm. Now with Forex, most of the most of trade Forex trading, they have a trading platform mm -hmm. and then there's a separate broker. Okay. So you, you speak to the broker, but you trade on the platform. Okay. So like, let's say, for example, um, I don't I want to throw brokers out there because I do not recommend this. Well, platform, broker. platform. Right? But platforms we trade on is called MetaTrader 4 or MetaTrader 5. MT4, MT5 in the um, app stores, right? Okay. Now you could choose, they have millions of brokers. It doesn't matter who your broker is. So let's say your broker is Tiffany, mm -hmm. right? That could be a broker, right? You download MetaTrader, right? Mm -hmm. You have MetaTrader, but then you would go to Tiffany.com and create an account, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Now, remember, Tiffany um, speaks to MetaTrader, so you have to create your trade in, your MetaTrader account on Tiffany.com. Okay, okay. So I would create my MetaTrader.com, um, my MetaTrader um, account on Tiffany, and then it would give me a login and a password for MetaTrader. Okay. And then I would go to MetaTrader login. Whatever. And then um, <laughs> the thing about trading Forex, right, um, they don't really operate in U.S. dollars. Mm -hmm. So to fund my Forex account, I would have to fund in Bitcoin or right. some oil coin okay. or okay. something like that, which I am... I love that because okay. sometimes, let's say I go to put $100 in my account, Bitcoin might go up and I get 105 Right, right. You know, so um, I love that. So um, basically, it's simple. If you have Cash App or if you have Coinbase or if you have a, if you have crypto, which you should. At this point, that should be You defended. should have some crypto. You should have some Bitcoin. You should have some Ethereum. You should have some XRP. You should have some crypto. And if you don't understand what crypto is, right, think of Bitcoin as just another form of income. It's like before the dollar was here, mm -hmm. there was, I don't know, they did bartering. They did credit cards. They did whatever. Mm -hmm. And then the U.S. dollar became a form of currency. Bitcoin is just another form of currency, guys. And mm -hmm. you could use it. Yeah. Mo I'm going to say through the multiverse, mm -hmm. right? So you would fund your account with some Bitcoin. Like I have um, Bitcoin on Coinbase. So I would just go to Tiffany.com, go to make a deposit, right. whatever the month I want to put. And you speak in U.S. dollars. So I want to put $100, mm -hmm. right? So I would deposit $100. I would go to my um, my Coinbase account and I would send $100 worth of Bitcoin. Okay. And it would go there. And then gotcha. I and I think connecting, you know, we got so much good stuff going on right now. Having Bitcoin should be the standard for somebody who wants to be an investor and somebody who wants to be up to date with what's going on in the world, because the world is changing. Absolutely. And there's some people right now who's watching this who don't have Bitcoin, mm -hmm. don't know how to put money into it, don't know how to use it. That should be the bar that, that should be the, the minimum respect for somebody yeah. 
to, to be at, right? I, I believe so. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, like investing because there's uh, there's multiple markets. So the crypto is a market in its own. Mm-hmm. Some people are not into crypto. But like I know a lot. Of some like one of my mentors I'm calling right now. He's not into crypto. He's heavy stock, heavy long term portfolio. So the same way we're invested in stocks and stuff like that is the same way we should invest in Bitcoin. You don't need a whole Bitcoin. Like you know, yeah. you just put but, a few dollars into it and watch your money appreciate. But I think also too for the viewers like. You should also be comfortable with this is something new. Yes. Mm-hmm. Ten years from now is yes. gonna be more mm-hmm. common Absolutely. in ways that we may not we may not even think, right? So don't wait until ten years from now to to be like, oh my gosh, did I give you Oh man, we don't want to verify well, what you're talking let's about. Let's talk about yes. where Bitcoin came from. Yes. Well, if we would have known what we know now, now ten years ago, yeah. we'd be sitting here yeah. billionaires. But I think that there's an investor side of it, mm-hmm. but it's also just a where we are today in and where we're going in the future, you got to at least know, listen, yeah. like, I could save time. Right. By, 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 I could send you Bitcoin. You could, I don't got to right. go to Western Union. Right. So, I mean, it's just the, right. the practicality of using it right. and knowing what it is. You don't have to worry about making money off of right. it, but do you know how to use it? Mm-hmm. Right. Because your job one day might tell you, listen, we're going to be using it. You know what I mean? So, be ahead of the game. I think and, athletes were starting that. They wanted to get paid. I think I think when Mayor Adams Bitcoin. first got the job, I, I think he yeah. veered off from it, yes, but he yes, was yes, speaking yes. about getting paid in, in Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But all right, so th- this is good. This is good. Mm-hmm. All right, so Keisha, we, we're speaking about assets and skill sets. Mm-hmm. So what skill sets do you need to become a successful investor? What, what are the skill sets you got to have? Um, believe it or not, it's the God-given principles. Discipline. Mm-hmm. Discipline is big. Discipline is the main skill set. Okay. You have to work on because trading or investing is just pressing the button. You go to your app, you press a button. Mm-hmm. Knowing when or having a discipline to wait for that asset to come into your buy or sell zone is key. Discipline. So mm-hmm. discipline. Discipline okay. is the main and patience. Discipline and pa- patience. I don't speak of patience and patience no more. It's P-A-Y shins. Like if you want to get paid, ah. you need to have patience. <laughs> yeah. Patience pays. Yeah, mm-hmm. because I'm pretty sure with all that you do, you you seen things go up and go down, and like I said, you know, you you're probably past the stage of kicking yourself in the foot. No, I kick myself in the foot every day, every single day, every day. <laughs> last right. week, I, every day, every day, because um. So I remember you asking me about you know goals and accomplishments for this year. This year, I am at the fa- I'm at the place where I want to master myself. I have no money goals. I have no nothing. I am trying to master systems. Mm-hmm. Goals will throw you off. Okay. Because if I have a system, the system will always get me back to that 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 number or get me to that goal. Mm-hmm. But if I'm just chasing that number, because sometimes I'm trading, I make seven thousand, five thousand, two thousand, one, a hundred. Mm-hmm. Like, what's my goal? Right. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Right. But if I have right. a system, the system will always bring me uh, or take me to profit. So right now, I'm really working, focusing on not just saving myself some time, energy, and money system, but really working on a success system that I that I want. Go through, and then I can say, hey, JR. You could do this. this you could do this. Tiff, you, you could do this. this. Pink shirt. <laughs> you could do this. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? A system, because right. when you have a system, yeah, you can yeah. plug anyone no, right. into it, and they can go from A to Z, like the alphabet. I so. got you. All right, so let me hit it with one more tip. So what is your favorite asset to trade? <laughs> my favorite stock is Microsoft. Microsoft. Yes, ah. but my favorite asset to trade is the S&P 500, baby. S&P 500. I trade SPY every day. Because I know you, and... I watch you, and I speak about you very highly. I spoke, you know, the, one you of the You threw her name in the in I was like, because, and a lot of people may ask me a lot of questions like, well, why this and why that? But I speak because I know your struggle. I know your story. It's like to see the confidence mm-hmm. and like where you get that from. I know your mother. Mm-hmm. I know your family. Your sister's my best friend. Mm-hmm. Your nephew's my godchild. <laughs> so I know that the confidence is there, but where did you, like, where did you get the confidence to say, you know what, this, I'm leaving this company. I'm making all this money and not just, it's not just money. Mm-hmm. I know money drives you. It's beyond the money. But it's beyond that because mm-hmm. I know you mm-hmm. and you had guts to do something that 90% of working people are afraid to do. And that's actually, what time I take lunch again? I'm, I'm not doing that no more. Yeah. You can't give me my lunch break no more. And I say that to, I tell that to my son. You want somebody to give you a lunch break? Mm-hmm. You don't want that. You don't want that. You're grown. I'm grown. I'm 40 years old. I'm, oh, nobody's not telling me no lunch break. But, still, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, what gave you the courage to actually walk out that door? Because I know how much money you make, girl. 
Okay. So, you, you're making a lot of money. You're making yeah, good money. I was making good money. And um, what's crazy is my job has some amazing benefits besides the money. Yeah, like of some course, crazy, of course. Not just like even health and stuff like that. Just some mm -hmm. amazing mm -hmm. things that I didn't even really take full advantage of. What happened was, right, um, I, was, I, I was woke. I knew I started learning my value. Mm -hmm. When um, I joined network marketing in, in 2014, mm -hmm. Red Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Then I was at seminars and events. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't miss one. You guys know I would mm -hmm. try to. Yes. I was at seminars and events. I was investing in myself because I, Robert Kiyosaki came mm -hmm. to the event that I was at. So um, I was kind of like, they, they was like, I was in a cult, which was good. Right. <laughs> I was I was brainwashed right. in a good sense. I was self-developing and growing. So once I realized that the job was going to keep me just over broke, mm. I wanted something different. Then in 2020, this is what happened. The pandemic hit and my job started working from home. So I got a glimpse of what life could mm -hmm. be. I always wanted to work from home or be able to. So I got a taste of what it could be. Then I also started actively trading. So I saw the vision. I made a couple of thousands a day. If I could do that consistently, right. I could leave. But this was the, the gotcha, gotcha. This was the straw that broke the, needle, the, uh, the camel's back. My job said one day they wanted us to come back in the office. Right. <laughs> Ooh. Right. After two years. After what? After what? <laughs> Come back to work. Right. Doing the same job. Doing the same job that I was doing at home. Like, I was waking up. I was at home smoking my weed. Can I say smoking my weed? Whenever I, I was at home smoking my weed whenever I wanted to. Right, right. Like, in my pajamas. I, I wasn't slacking on the job. Because what you happened was... more work. I was doing more work. More work. I, would be at, I, would, I was at my desk from all day. I wouldn't right. even have a time in the morning. I would be there, like... Throughout 4 a.m., right. I would be back there at 6 a.m. I would be there because I was also trading. Right. So um, I saw myself like, um, and it was crazy because uh, right after that, I made the money. It's like in December, my job was saying to me, like, you know, I'm just like, I'm you see not. How, see how God Yeah, works? they were saying, like, you know, we needed to get uh, vaccinated. And I was like, ah, you know. I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't know. I'm really against that or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I end up catching COVID. But this was also another thing, too. I end up getting COVID, right? And they didn't care. Right. They, they treated me like I'm sick, and they treated me like I was right. an animal or nothing. They didn't right. care. Right. So um, once I realized that, I was just like, you know what? But I also had an exit plan. Mm -hmm. I knew that I could make money. So I was stacking my bread. I was stacking my money. I was The whole two years we were at, mm -hmm. in the pandemic, I bought nothing. I bought nothing. Mm -hmm. I gave my car back. I had a BMW that I was um, leasing. Gave it back. Mm -hmm. The only expenses I had was I paid off all my credit card. Um, thank God to, uh, what's his name? That, that guy, y'all know him. I'll say his name later. Patrick Ramsey. David mm -hmm. Ramsey. David Ramsey. So um, I got rid of all my bills. Mm -hmm. He said, if you have money in your checking account, your savings account, why? You get no interest on that. But if you have credit card bills, they're charging you interest. Mm -hmm. So take that money. Be willing to go broke to come out of debt. So I paid off all my debt. And then for the two years, I was just stacking. I had more money in the bank than I ever had. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a lot. It was like two little 20,000. Right. It wasn't crazy. But still. But it was something good. to right. stand on. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it gave me the confidence to really walk away, to really be like, okay. I didn't make the money before I left. Right. I made the money after. after. And that's, and that's usually what happens. Mm -hmm. You have to make that tough decision. Because I said, right, those eight hours that I was sitting at the computer for the job, mm -hmm. per se, if I could just trade, right, and even so, my first goal was three hundred dollars a day. I knocked that out right. ASAP. I mean, right. you know, like, and we knocked that out ASAP, right. and it was like, oh, I'm, I'm never going back to work. So, um, the job was cool, the people was cool, but it was just like some people are meant to work and some people are meant to leave. Absolutely. And I feel like I'm, I'm meant to. Leave. I mean, we all absolutely. I think we're all meant to lead, yeah. but some people won't, yes. won't, won't realize that they're meant to lead mm -hmm. and they will continue working. You harp a lot on your asses on what you have made. I want you to explain, because I know the story. I want you to explain, because it goes into like my next question, to the people that I've made the six figures. I've had the six figures in my bank account. Some people may say, well, she made six figures. Why she's not living this six-figure life? Tell the people what happened and what barriers that you had to face to with the IRS, with the government. Like, this oh. woman that made this kind of money and she thought she was just going to live with all this money in her mm. bank account. And as we all would think, mm -hmm. I can go do something. I make, I have $800,000 in a Chase account. I'm thinking I'm good. Mm -hmm. I'm about to be, you know, swiping and doing whatever. Tell the people exactly what happened. 
Well, the first thing that happened was I knew that that 800000 was nothing. Mm -hmm. So that was a good thing. So I had looked at that money that I didn't have, like I didn't have it no more. Okay. Then I had to make another six, another four, whatever it was. I, had to, I damn near made another eight. Mm -hmm. one day, it was actually like one day. Mm -hmm. So I had to go do it again and have money that I can mm -hmm. play with. But I didn't, the thing about this second time I made the money, I didn't take the money. I didn't take it out of my account. I was trying to hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Ended up giving the market some of it back. But the first um, set of assets or the, the, the money that I made, I needed to pay taxes. Mm -hmm. Taxes, boy. Taxes, taxes. yes. Taxes. You need to pay taxes. Yeah. That taxes. is income, and it was a lot of income, yes. right? Now, the same year I made that money, I had no job to kind of like... Mm -hmm what do you say, coincided or like offset. to offset it, mm -hmm. right? So before when I was working, they I was on the books, I was getting taxable income. Now in 2021, now that I made this money, I don't have no taxable income, so I didn't file no taxes. Mm. Mm. But it wasn't really something that I was trying to do. Remember, it's my first year off right. of my job. I became a bum for a couple of months. And then I remembered in October, actually a paper came from the IRS. It was like, hey, you have been, because I didn't pay, I didn't do my taxes the year before. Oh, so you you got all the money mm -hmm. and not really I forgot was, about for, forgot yeah. about Uncle Sam. Uncle yeah, Sam forgot about like, responsibility. Because now on. you know what usually remind me that I got to do my taxes. Your job was my W two. Right. W two. Yeah. Right. No W two K. <laughs> no W two K. We're still. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I was um fog. I was in a fog in a sense. And also my tax lady, I didn't. Re well, my tax lady had messed up my taxes the, the year prior. So I used to always defer my taxes because I was always paying. Mm -hmm. So in 2020, my 2019 taxes were supposed to be done. It was a pandemic year. We didn't do it. 2021 now, my mm -hmm. 2019 and 2020 taxes are supposed to be done. That's when I hit the, that was three years now of not doing taxes. And that's when, I think I had a, a red flag. I think yeah, a I think flag went years, off. I think, I think three years yeah. of flag you. For I think, yeah. And then I had a, um, automatically I had like a $300,000 tax debt that I had to pay. But now this was the gotcha, gotcha. You can't pay it from that money. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so you had you all that, that? Yeah, that you money. Hear that? Wait, hold on. I had so you, you can't pay it from that money, you no. You can't pay from no. that money. That but is you wild. Because you don't have I didn't have access to that money. The, they had clamped that money down. I went through it with the bank. Wait, wait, they froze the account? Yeah, they froze my accounts. All of them. Yeah. They froze all my bank accounts. Yeah, People, please they listen. froze my assets, yeah. Please. They froze my oh, wow. and um yeah. Thanks. And Ooh. yeah. So how'd you get out of that? I'm I'm well, how did I get out of that? I'm going to say God or because what happened was it was such a scary thing. I was living with this for a year and a half, two years because I didn't know. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say this to you guys. Right. Don't matter where you are in life, whether it's your credit, your finances, whatever you are. Find your starting point. You cannot fix something if you don't know where you are. So I didn't know where my starting point was. I was just like, oh, I don't know. They froze my head. Oh, you know, so one day, um, I think it was like the day before the Super Bowl. I, t I had a bad fall in my house, almost like a freak accident. Um, this leg, like, it's still messed up, like a freak accident. Like, my leg got caught up in my doggy's uh, stairs, and it just it drugged me from the bedroom to the living room while this other leg was at the bedroom door. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so so it, was, go. it, was, it was bad. But what that did was I was already sitting down and slowed down, but it forced me now to slow down more. And I started, anyway, I started thinking of different things. I started, like... Okay, where am I at? I started like looking at what was going on. And then one day, um, I went to a tax lady. Mm -hmm. I went to go get some papers notarized. And I was hot. And she wanted me to put, put the mask on. So I didn't want to put the mask on because I was hot. I was like, I was hot. So I wanted to take my mask off. So I was chatting. So I was like, oh, Michelle Obama right here. So anyway, I mumbled out that, oh, my God, I got this big tax that I got to pay. And I accidentally kind of like spoke. And she was like, what do you say, baby? And I was like, yeah, man, the IRS is on my ass. I don't even know what I got to pay. Da, da, da. Is that you serious? And I'm like, yeah. So then I looked over on the wall. I said, how much you guys charge to do taxes? It wasn't that much. Mom was like, oh, do you mind doing my taxes? Mm. I had everything in my phone. I had my W-2, mm -hmm. everything. So we sat down and she just started. God is good. And yeah. she and that person that lady, helping you get out of she, the situation. Man, that lady, they had a family business. They made me feel so comfortable. She sat there and when she looked, when she logged into the IRS website and brought my information up, she almost jumped out of her seat. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> when she saw that there was a big red flag, alarms, alert, 390000 was due. Oh my God. Um, oh my but um, because of uh, penalties and fees too, first year penalty was 190000 And All of the money. Yeah. 
I, penalty. You wasn't getting, but did they send you any mails? They, they, and now, you know what's crazy? Oh, they they I went through the mails yesterday and they, they were sending me some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. I, but look, right, you would think, why is the IRS sending, sending me collections? It's coming from consumer servants. Right. And, so you were just like, nah. Yeah, they, I'm like, but I remember sending it to my tax lady. That the old lady and we had, she told me we had got my taxes done. Mm. Now we really didn't, right? We really didn't. So um, it wasn't until like October of 2021 that we got my my taxes in, and then come to find out, like my 2020 taxes wasn't still wasn't done. Well, so wow. it was just like it, a, it, I think Fat Joe got jammed up like that with a bad tax. So taxes is, a, is yeah. an important thing. Yes. You got to make sure you have honorable people who are trying yes. to do the right yes. thing because you could think you're doing the right thing and yeah. get jammed up. So. So, all right, so we got a, we still got a few things Don't to play with the IRS. Like, don't I'm going to say, don't, if the IRS say you owe some money, the best thing to do is pay them. Pay them now before it accrues. Pay them plan, do anything. Yes, because it's before it accrues any interest and stuff like that. And if, in fact, you win and you don't owe them, they will pay, they will send you back like a tax return. Yeah. So pay them now and just, mm -hmm. just, yeah. All right. Yeah. So, so mm -hmm. Keisha, you're at home, you're investing, you got the money, you know what to do. But I think even if you're a good trader, how diverse would you say or you recommend somebody's portfolio be in today's market? Um, very diverse. Uh, like, well, I wouldn't say very diverse, but very diverse. Let's say your, your account is $100, right? Mm -hmm. Or your pie is, the pie is $100. Um, I would say do 40% in um, EFTs, um, mm -hmm. ETFs. ETFs. <laughs> yeah. ETFs. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. ETFs. Electronic right. funds transfer, I'm thinking. Right. In all that, ETFs. All, all the talk we were doing, yeah. In ETFs, uh, about 40% in ETFs, uh, indexes, long-term stuff. Um, uh, 20% in long-term like assets like Apple's Apple, and Microsoft, Microsoft and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, and then, then we got what, 40% left? 40, you got about 40% left, mm -hmm. yes. I would say do 20% crypto. And then I would I would recommend 20% liquid. Okay. Mm -hmm. for, like for, for, for what reason would you say have 20% liquid? Because you you know, you want to be prepared for opportunities. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like, like if the market you, goes down a lot. Or if something new comes out or, you oh, know, you want to yeah, okay. be prepared. You always, you, cash is a position. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Liquidity yeah. is a position. That's a position. And it, it will help you not miss other positions yeah. and stuff gotcha, like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Like the bubble so, we're in now. That AI maybe even 10% cash. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, yeah. yeah. So yeah. between 10 and 20. All right. But you definitely want to have some, um, some cash on hand. All right. So how would you describe the S&P 500? How important is it? And what is it for the, the person who's just looking at this right now at home and saying, what is the S&P 500 like? Mm -hmm. They may Google this and see that that's a safe thing to invest, mm -hmm. to get started with. Mm -hmm. So just give the people, the viewers, a uh, quick um, you know, take on what the S&P 500 is. Now, the S&P 500 is an index fund. Now, what is an index fund? An index fund is just made up of the number 500. It's made up of 500 different classes of assets. Mm -hmm. Apple, Microsoft, whatever, whatever, whatever. So the S&P 500, so if you're invested in the S&P 500, but you're also invested in Apple, Apple could be going down, but the S&P is going up mm -hmm. because it represents 500 other stocks. So it is something good to get um, to invest in. I wouldn't say right now because we're near the top. Oh, my God. You guys see what's going on? We're mm -hmm. in scary territories. Yes. Still can invest in it, but that's what the S&P 500 is. It keep, it's a, it's a, a cluster. You could say it's a basket. Well, a basket yeah, index. All the companies. Okay. Mm -hmm. And did you start out trading? Like when you first started trading, was that something you played around with the S&P? Or did you get into that as you got more seasoned? And experience. I got into it. when I first was trading. My friend was trading it, and I didn't like it. I didn't understand why because that was like I was doing options, and that was like the only thing you could do day trades on. Like mm -hmm. you had to get out the trade today. Um, <laughs> in my experience, was that my first trade that I did, I didn't make the money today, so I didn't want to get out. I, it was two, three, four days later. Yeah. So I wanted to. I'm a swing trader. I rather held my trades. Mm -hmm. So it was something. I, it's something I got way more comfortable now as I go along because now, baby, that's a, you love. Now you love so that. the money yeah, reside. That Q Q Q and everything, but I've um I want to use the word mastered. I've traded that every almost every day this year. What the S and P five? Yes, I okay. I can tell you when it's gonna reverse and, and bounce. And too high and, yeah, and yeah. yeah, I mean at, and, at some and point real right quick, now. Quick for the investors, that's a powerful thing. Not trying to learn every different thing stock, but time. if you could really Master hone in on that mm -hmm. one, you it's, it becomes like a family member. You know yeah. how this person's going to yeah. act. Mm -hmm. You know what triggers <laughs> sure. it. Yeah. What You know what I mean? So I think that's a gem for investors is to, in order that you can get distracted with, learn, learn one particular one. stock. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a very and valuable patterns. one too. And, the, that's and that's you get to learn it, you know? So yeah. Learn and the let me give you one more tip. Absolutely. And is it a good time to buy that? You just kind of said that it's at the top. So you it's, wouldn't recommend I, somebody 
buying it right now. It's room to go. So like for me, for me in particular, I wouldn't recommend somebody new buying it because it's not that much room to go. But for me, once it breaks a certain level, I'm dumping on mm. it. Because if it got another $10 in it, I just don't want to make $10. I want to make now, now, I I, think, you know, now, you tell me if it's right, or am I correct or not, but for a person who's looking the long term, if we say, out of all the stocks you want to buy, get that S P 500 and you're holding it for 10, 20 years, if they're doing like an average cost thing, then they can kind of get into it now. If they're looking to every month put money into it. Yes. I right? would say wait you, for it. Wait for this pullback. Still, you, you're I, still more on getting at the right price. Yes. Mm -hmm. it's it. Because the market has been so bullish, we've been bullish the whole year. It's been going up the whole year. Yeah, yeah. We so last year was a good time to get to into get it. Or early this year. Yeah. In January, right. January was perfect to buy everything. Okay, January so, of this year yeah. was like the perfect time to buy everything. Crypto, mm -hmm. stocks, everything. So we're, you know, we're coming towards the end of the year. We're going to push. We're going to push through because we're going to take out the um the previous highs. That's what it do. But one to once take out the previous, yeah, I think we're going to come down yeah. really nasty and really fast. All right. It's the patterns too. of the market. Yeah, that's what it does. It's inevitable. It's a, yeah. but, but you do think we're going to hit the all-time high. Absolutely. Before. And in order for the markets to continue going, it has, has to pull back. Yeah. yeah so if, if we don't get no pullback, we're going to crash. All right. So so, so it has to, to pull back. back to get its bearings, mm -hmm. get some muscle, get some strength. And go back up again. Pick up some money, basically. All right. <laughs> Just All pick right. up the money. It's coming to pick up money to, um, to move on. Mm -hmm. So as you're speaking, you covered a lot of questions. Can you make a living? Yes. Absolutely. You can't. You covered the highs and lows of the decision, mm -hmm. dealing with taxes, mm -hmm. not understanding your money, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because you could give this knowledge to a regular person, and because there's a little luck in this as well. It's yeah. As I'm not gonna say trading is just all an educated thing. There's a little on your side. The timing, as well. got, the timing got to be Time, on your side. Yeah, Time. It's, it's on your side. And let's say you run it up, and you're like, oh gosh, I have all of this. So you and you pretty much letting us know. What's the high and what's the low? Mm -hmm. I know you face challenges. Every day. And your company, Wall Street, is all streets. You are a woman. And I feel in this game, it's male dominant. Mm -hmm. Do you think you face any challenges with people believing in you because you are also a woman? And looking at the competition out there, as far as I see so many male, they, so many companies, so many different avenues are run by they're male dominant male dominated. Mm -hmm. and you're a woman you're young and you're trying to teach this and it may not be a gender thing but do you think you do face challenges being a woman I've and people not believing in you hmm you know people are like i'm gonna say this it doesn't matter if you're male or female people are you're gonna find people are not gonna believe you um i've never really saw it i don't know maybe i'm a lesbian <laughs> so, I feel very manly per se, uh, but mm -hmm. I've never, um, like, the thing about me too was, um, I, I'm going to say I did three things my whole life. I played ball, I was doing the travel business, and now I'm trading. So everything I did, mm -hmm. I did it seriously. I was always mm -hmm. a pat, I put my whole into it. Like, my mom would call me, she said, you're, you're still at work? Mm -hmm. I don't have a job, but she know I'm trading. Right. So she know not to call, four o'clock. My right. sister called me, you, you know what I mean? Right. So everything I did, I took it serious because right. if, I'm going to show you how to, but, um, in my, I'm going to say in my, maybe we're so small at this point Absolutely. that I, I don't feel that yet or I don't see that yet. But okay. I do feel like I could bang with the best of them. Absolutely. Like, and that's, and, but that's confidence. Yeah. And I, I don't get inter intimidated by men. I feel like we're smarter anyway. As, no disrespect. <laughs> no, 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 no. As females, I feel like we're yes, smarter we and we have systems and we're more strategic anyway. Like a guy just press the button, bang his head on the wall, bang his head on the wall. We yeah. are. I always say, I got my own little investor thing too. I always tell people females are the best investors. Why? Absolutely. Even, you know, with my significant other, y'all don't sell stuff. We, we you can do. buy app, you can buy any stock mm -hmm. and it could go up, down, around. Absolutely. A female is not going to pull that trigger. Mm -hmm. Even if it goes down to zero, right. like, like, you know wait, what? Wait. It may come, <laughs> it back. come back. It's just a trait That's that y'all have. have. Whereas men, back. I'll be honest, we were like, nah, it's down 30%. Nah, and then as soon as you sell it, it's going back up. And it, so and it's, it's real. Absolutely. I'm not females, females are the best investors. Absolutely. I, I listen, I'll say that any day of the week. But yeah, as far as the men, you know what's crazy? I've, I, it's, I have six brothers. So yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, you had, yeah. It was, you grew up tough. Yeah, it was, <laughs> right? yeah. I played basketball. Like, it was, 
maybe for, you know what else too? Maybe because I'm not your your feminine right. per- female right. and stuff like that. So, you're, so maybe you're not even maybe, looking for those things. Yeah, that, and right. also like you know, a lot of females like when they're doing stuff, the guys be looking at them and stuff like that. Even if the guy is looking at me, I don't see that and I don't feel that. And when guys are looking at me, I go dap them up. Yo, good, right? Right. like not that right. I'm a dude or anything like right. that, but I'm gonna sh- I'm gonna, listen. I'm here for business, right. and I um I usually set those those things straight. But as far as like um, I don't know. No, Maybe no, like, no, 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 yeah, no, 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 I wish it, you made yeah. me think. I never ever, because I never really thought about the next man. So, <laughs> what do you fear? God. Right now, and not doing what he said, you know, what he said to do mm-hmm. right now. Honestly, I know people might think, right now, I'm this year, at this time, at this place where I am, I am locked in with the higher power. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing anything. I mean, I try, okay. I'm trying to be as obedient as possible. You know, mm-hmm. um, you know, we're all, we mm-hmm. all have our little flaws and our little sins and things mm-hmm. like that. But I, right now I fear disappointing God because mm-hmm. he gave me the energy. He gave me the spirit. He gave me the vision. He gave me the work ethic. He gave me everything. Mm-hmm. Now it's really up to me to, um, to do yeah. that. So that's what so I follow into your purpose. Mm-hmm. Do you believe this is your purpose? You, are you living in your, your purpose? I, I, I am living in a, pur- in a purpose. Mm-hmm. I am living in service mode. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, the reason I feel like I have a lot of um, blockages and stuff like that, like why I'm not just flying through the roof is because every time I get to a certain level or if I get to a certain door mm-hmm. and God opened the door for me, I turn around and I go grab everybody yeah. to try to bring them through. So this year has been my first year of being OK with selfish, letting people go. I don't want to use the word selfish. Be selfish. I, yeah, I, yeah, it is. That's but I was OK with letting people go. Are you OK with that? What? Are you OK with if you have to? Friends, Absolutely. family, all of partner. Them. I did that already. I I may have to, because when you find your purpose, you realize the people that you were rocking with. Like mm-hmm. I, I think that happened to me already. You're my blockage. You you're the reason. Energy. You got to have your energy. Yeah. You were my blockage. That happened to me already. I remember at one point I couldn't go to my mother's house. Right. Why? Right. Not that I couldn't, because it was negative. The energy, right. the vibes, right. no, the aura, right. everything was off. Right. When I that was a part of my self development era when I was in the in, um, in the travel company. Um, once you start like you know what I mean like your mind your brain your life is your canvas and what you let what you allow like if you wouldn't let somebody come in your bedroom and I heard this in the book or audio you wouldn't let somebody come take a garbage bag and come in your bedroom and just dump it on your bed yeah. right absolutely no but why would you sit here and let someone speak negativity and dump that on your brain right. telling you dump what you can't do yeah. or, or whatever. Yeah, you so I had to like you know, energy, in order to, to elevate, you have to separate, and you true and so and you have to like I've, I've, I'm willing to cut the world off. I was about to ask you that. Are yes. you afraid of that? Being no, alone? no, I am alone. I'm alone every day. Right. And at the top, it's lonely. On the way up, it's not lonely because you're passing a lot of people, Absolutely. and that's what I had to realize that when I'm passing people, or when I'm even looking, I'm not that I, I don't want to use the word looking down because I am the person that want to bring everyone up, Absolutely. and that's been one of my. Mm. This is three times in my life. I feel like I was at this level here Mm -hmm. and I use the word ascend to the next dimension Mm -hmm. by the TD Jakes of me. Mm -hmm. And when I get here, I'm, I, I am the weapon formed against me. Mm. You, 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 your, own, your own self. Yes. Right? I am the weapon formed well, against time, me. This time, you don't hold this back. Year, no, nah, yeah. this year taught me. You're going to ascend to that next yes. higher level. Yeah. Absolutely. I, and you yeah. talk about alone. I am alone every day. Yeah, that's like my point. life, I am alone every day and I love it. Mm-hmm. I wake up at 6.37. I'm, I'm one of the, she comes out and she looks, she, you there. She goes to work. Mm-hmm. She comes home. I'm still there. Right. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. you know what I mean? If I'm texting a few people, I have my Zooms and stuff like that, but right. I am, I'm, I've never been this locked in. I'm locked in. Locked in. That's so, awesome. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm well, locked listen, in. Well, listen, Keish, we run out of time. So real quickly, give the people your Instagram, your social media stuff, where they can follow you. And see I got what my you one got fun question. On. Yes. So let her give that to the yes. people. All right. So my Instagram, my personal page is Keish, K-E-I-S-H, 801 at gmail.com. Yeah, yeah. we're going to have them put that up on the on the um, video yes. so people can see it and, and my, follow yes. you and see what you got going on. Yes. And my trading page. I have a trading page because I'm, I want to I want to separate myself from what I do. Mm-hmm. Like most of the time people don't separate themselves from what they do. That's why they can't leave the job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I am an accountant. No, I was a person that did accountant services. Mm-hmm. I'm not a freaking accountant. What is an accountant? Mm-hmm. Anyway, so um, my Wall Street page is called Wall Street to All Street on Instagram. I recently just... um change this from my, my academy page and um okay, so Wall Street to All Streets, yes, and Keish eight oh one um did I say Gmail? 
don't know why I said Gmail. Nice. No. Keish 801. I did say Gmail, right? Oh. Keish 801. That's my um, that's also my email if you want to email me. But Keish 801 and Wall Street to Wall Street. This Those are my Instagram fun. pages. Yeah. And my Facebook is Keisha Green. This and is definitely fun. Yes. I just have my one fun yeah, question. Yeah, I got to because we got to wrap up um, with it. Fun question. You were into basketball. Yes, I love basketball. And I know that very well. Play for Paul Robeson. Mm -hmm. What athlete describes your style of trading? Think about it. Their style of play could be present, past. This is for the hoopers. The hoopers out there. This is for the hoopers. This is yes. for the hoopers. What athlete do you <clears throat> say describes or can describe how aggressive you are? Giannis. You and your Luca vibe? You and your Luca vibe? Giannis. 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 Very Giannis. aggressive and a little hot headed sometimes, yeah. <laughs> Giannis, running over everything. <laughs> Giannis, all right, running all through right. everything, never afraid. Um, definitely feel like I could do it myself, like him and stuff like that. Um, and sometimes you know, bite off more than I can chew. But I do believe I do. I feel like Giannis can carry the team on his back. Yeah. And I feel like, and that's my problem sometimes too, because mm -hmm. it's like you can lead a million people, mm -hmm. but seriously, how many people can you carry on your back down the block? That's right. hard. Not even one. That's gonna be hard, right? So. Yeah, so Giannis, Giannis right now, and it's things I'm seeing in him. Shout out to Giannis. Yes, Giannis, I love you, but there's some things I'm seeing that we need to fix, bro. You, we need to fix. Do you think they could win the chip this year? No. Uh -huh. no, got, no, no, no. They got too, um, man. They, because if because of, it's here. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, they got the physical. They have to get the mental, and they have to get the jealousy. Well, we still have the season left. They have the season to go, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they have to, um, and something that I've been seeing in Giannis over the years, he, he got to get this here. Like, he, yeah. he got to get this under control. Well, they did. he did win a chip, though, right? And right. He's oh, amazing. Well, I don't want to take yeah, nothing okay, from him. Right. Physically, he's, he got to get that mamba mentality. That mm -hmm. mindset right. is, and it's not that his mindset is wrong. He's like, he's like a bulldozer. You can't yeah. be a bulldozer in the game. He's you have to. When healthy, Coach Keisha. He's a beast. You have to, you know. But that, but I'm glad for that because it reminds me, and thank you for asking that because that reminds me like that you gotta slow down keep relax like yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean yeah, that's interesting that's well listen um, what we're gonna do uh, you know what so we're gonna wrap up this, this was once again thank you for coming to the show thank you guys for having me and you know we want to talk about some highlights from um, the Vaughn show but also connecting the dots with everything we talked about mm -hmm. it's so crazy how the first show was done with the Vaughn who's a friend family he's like family mm -hmm. and it's through Tiffany then I'm talking to, I talk to my cousin Tiffany all the time about stuff. And I'm like, all right, who should be next in the show? I got a couple of names out there. She says, Keisha. And I'm like, well, I'm like, Keisha is doing a lot of stuff. But I'm like, you know what? Her story, you know what? She sold me on like, yeah, but do you know she did this? Do you know she did that? <laughs> and I'm like, she did? All right, so they get on the show. Mm -hmm. But I think, too, we all connect in some kind of way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you got to uh, respect and cherish relationships because... Absolutely. I didn't, you know, if it wasn't for Tiffany, I wouldn't know Devon, I wouldn't know you. Mm -hmm. Same. You know, right. and I'm pretty sure in your journey, you know, you never know who's that next person. Right. You don't know who's going to be who. Mm -hmm. And thank God for me, y'all showing me love because I called you, I called Devon, and y'all like, sure, when? Right. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you never had no funny vibes for me. Right. I never had no fun. You know, I always show love. Right, right, right. I always feel like if I, I got my cousin here in the background, if, if me and you is cool, everybody you cool with is cool with it's me. Cool with, mm -hmm. And we got to keep that energy the right way. Absolutely. So I want to close out by just telling the viewer at home, investing is for everybody. Man, woman, black, white, Chinese, whatever you like, it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. And if you want to be that person in your family to change the trajectory of investing, we have an example right here today. Somebody who wasn't given this skill. They weren't given a silver spoon. Mm -hmm. They honed in on their craft, had the passion, mm -hmm. determination, discipline, you said, right? Discipline. Discipline, the right mentorship. Mm -hmm. And she's full time with this changing generational wealth, I'm saying? Generational wealth. Gener Listen, I know it's, it may sound like a, uh, this is not smoke and mirrors. This is somebody who's doing it in real time. In real time. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty sure some people watching this are going to not get that investor's bug. Mm -hmm. But th that one person that's seeing this, mm -hmm. I really hope if this is hitting your soul, hitting your spirit, tap in, follow her, follow people like her, and just be that person to change the investing energy into your life, man. Because where we going with the economy? Who knows? But if you could be a successful trader, you can always go out there and make money, as mm -hmm. we said today. Absolutely. And she's asking just to learn the skill. Not ask you to join anything. Not ask you to pay a subscription or learning. Mm -hmm. Investing can change your life. 
It changed. And that's first. what that's what I want to drive. And that's, this what, and that's, and that's the main thing. People mm-hmm. always feel like we're investing. I was definitely one of those people as well. Where I'm like, oh, I'm not doing this. You just want my you want twenty dollars. You yeah. want my thirty dollars. You want you want this. But if you listen to the story and the message, just invest. Just invest, man, and Learn. make sure the person is as passionate mm-hmm. as sharing as Keisha Green is. So listen. Thank you, Tiffany, for co-hosting. Yeah, thanks, you, you did a job. great job. Yes, thanks, you were a little nervous behind the scenes, but <laughs> you bit, look like you did bit. this a million times. Yes. Listen, Shouts out to my cousin Daryl behind the screen. The Help picture. him make sure that we look right, we sound right. Keisha, thank, thank you, you thank for sharing your story, motivating myself, the people at home. That's fine. I know I'm going to be home one day and I'm going to put that <laughs> damn TV on mm-hmm. and see yes, you on yes. something like, yo, Keisha, don't forget me. Right. Mm-hmm. And you're not going to because you're not like that. Oh, no, she's coming like okay. no, I definitely. tell people all the time. Mm-hmm. I talk about this girl at work. I have a, somebody at work who was like, you know Keisha Green? I called her. <laughs> and they, they, I guess, I don't know how they know you, but they were, I was speaking. I said, no, like, I know somebody, She we trying to get where she's at. We trying to leave this place. Yeah. You know, shout out to my job. I like y'all. But, you know, I'm like, listen, this is the goal. This is the apex. This is what we want to do. Mm-hmm. We want to have time, too. You can make money from your phone, your computer. You don't have to leave your house. You can mm-hmm. shower when you want. You can cook. You can be with your family. And it's they was possible. like, I know Keisha Green. Like, I know her. She mm-hmm. she get money. And I'm like, yeah, that's like my little sister. Keisha, <laughs> Green. Keisha Green. Keisha Green, man. Yeah. Yeah. Keisha Green. Shouts out to the we'll Bon Jovi. Episode one. Yes, what bro. happened at 625 River yes. Rose. Right. When you're not here, so we're going to shout you out the third show because it's the a family bond. affair. Shouts Absolutely. out to the Bon. Keisha Green. If you don't that's know her, you is. need to know her <laughs> because she's trailblazing. All yeah. right? So remember, everybody's journey is similar, but it's also different. Absolutely. Unpack her story. Apply it to what you got going on every day. Absolutely. And maybe we'll have you here next episode. Very soon. Shouts out, y'all. Peace right. and love. Thank you, thank you, thank you.